Hello, I'm Josh. I'm Tim. We're from Avalon Bushcraft and we're out in the woods today to talk about knives. So the knives in question are two knives that me and Tim have owned for about a year now. And of course it is the Mora Garberg. Mora Garberg, I guess you could say it's the king of Mora knives um, because it is the first knife that Mora made that has a full tang. Full tang meaning that the steel from the blade runs the full width and length of the handle. Although in this case, it does have a rubberized grip that is fully molded around it. I actually prefer this personally because when you have scales on a full tang knife and you're doing a lot of batoning, the scales can have a tendency to sort of separate after a while, which can cause a few problems down the line. But anyway, let's start with the specifications of this particular knife. So this knife has, I believe, it's a four and a half inch blade made of stainless steel. It's a 14C28N steel uh, with a Rockwell hardness of about 58 Rockwell. From my use and experience, this steel has performed brilliantly. Um, I see no difference in edge holding from this compared to like say 01 or 80CRV2. It's very easy to sharpen, it's tough, and of course the uh, added benefit is it's not going to rust if we get it wet. The blade is 3.2mm thick, which I find to be a pretty ideal thickness for most woodland, woodland tasks. Uh, the handle itself, it's kind of this, uh, it's not hard, it's quite, um, you know, you can put your thumb in there and it will bounce back, it's almost rubberized, but it is very tough, it's this kind of over molded plastic. It's got some checkering on the side there for added grip and these kind of divots as well as I guess what you could call a guard that goes around the whole thing. It's very Paco-esque, um, which would make sense being a Swedish knife. In the hand it feels solid, it grips really nicely. You've got a lot of confidence when you use one of these, it doesn't feel like it's going to slip out of your hand or anything like that. As far as in use, if you're doing a lot of carving I would say, although this knife is very capable, it's not the one to choose. I would choose something with a more rounded handle, maybe quite, a, maybe a narrower blade, as this guard here does tend to get a little bit of a hot spot. However, it is very useful for when using wet or when you just want to get the job done really fast. So if you're going for a lot of carving, I would stick to a Sloyd style knife. Moving to the butt of the knife, on the back we have this part of the tang that protrudes out from the back and we found that really useful for a few things. Um, first thing is you can spark a ferrocium rod off of this. It's a 90 degree angle, it's very very sharp. Um, another thing that I use it mostly for is actually for processing tinder, so scraping birch bark, scraping bark from cedar or even from wood to actually get a fire going. This has proved very very useful in getting that done. There's two different sheath options you can get with these. Um, there's the leather sheath that has a sort of flap around, um, I guess you could call it a hood that pockets in, um, which is an option, but we both went for the plastic option, mainly because it's cheaper and also because leather soaks up moisture. The whole idea of this knife for me and Tim was that it's an all weather knife. It's a tool that we can take out and we can get it soaking wet if the water gets into there, it just drains out of the bottom. You can, put, you can put this thing in a dishwasher and it just will not damage the knife at all, whereas a leather sheath will always add that added risk of corrosion. The sheath itself is fine. It's got fairly good retention. Um, it is the standard sort of plasticky Mora feeling sheath, uh, but compared to the clipper sheaths or anything like that, it does have a few more features. For example, this multi-mount system which allows you to put that onto a molly strap like on a bag or something like that. It also has a little belt loop, nice and flappy. That is removable and can be clipped in with a few different add-ons. I've seen all kinds of different mods for these kind of things, they're very customizable. So that is the stock model of Amora Garberg. So after having this knife and using it for the last year, um, both for work and for hobby stuff. I made a few little changes to mine. So the stock model, absolutely brilliant, but one of the issues that I had with mine 
with carving is there's this you know you've got this sort of hump on the back of the blade. I don't really see a purpose for that. All it does is brings your point of manipulation further away from the edge. By point of manipulation I mean where you're putting your thumbs when you're doing certain cuts. So with my one I've slimmed that down. I don't know if you can have a look at those two blade profiles. But my one is a little bit more skinny which just allows me to get in to the wood a little bit easier. It's just making carving notches and preparing bow drill sets and all that kind of thing a little bit easier. Uh, the only other mod I really did on the blade of mine is removing the secondary bevel which does come on the factory, factory model. Um, whether to have a secondary bevel or not is really down to personal preference. You will have a stronger edge with a secondary bevel but I find the steel is so tough that without even, even without a secondary bevel, just a slight micro bevel from stropping and even under hard use this has been incredibly tough and hasn't required a secondary bevel to, bo to beef it up. I also changed the sheath around on mine so that was the same plastic sheath. I've just put a bit of leather on it to make it look cool and uh, I've added an extra piece of leather up the top here, moulded in, gives it extra retention and then I just use one of these classic clips to put it on my belt and I find that works great for me. I've used this knife as my main bushcraft knife despite making my own knives um, for all sorts of things. I've used it for, for dressing a deer, I've used this as one of my main tools for making bows, um, whether it's removing material of the blade or even using the back of the blade to scrape. That's another thing I should add. The spine on these knives, it's a perfect 90. They throw sparks, they scrape like nothing else that I've seen straight out of the factory. Absolutely ballistic for scraping and uh, it adds just even more function to the knife in my opinion. Good man. Um, so I guess these knives, what they kind of represent for me is not really caring about your knife too much. Um, what a lot of people tend to do and what I do is you get a really nice handmade knife that's unique to you. Um, brilliant performance knife, that kind of thing, but generally speaking they are really made out of a tool steel which will corrode. And we live in Britain where it rains most of the time. Uh, we're always dealing with moisture. Um, the benefits of having a stainless blade, as I'm sure a lot of people have noticed these days, is you don't have to worry about that. You don't have to go home and oil your knife. Um, also, even just small amounts of moisture in the air, when they touch the apex of your edge, they will dull your knife over time with a carbon steel blade. So with a stainless blade, you've got a knife that will just stay sharp regardless of the elements. Um, and stainless steel these days is more than good enough to represent that. Um, yeah, it's confidence really. It's uh, having something that you can smack about. It only costs 50 quid. Uh, it's, um, it's not an expensive thing, but it's a, just a solid tool. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there, Josh. Um, really solid knife. You know, I'm not afraid to put this one down. I'm not even afraid to lose it because the, 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 the price is so cheap on them, although you don't want to lose your knife, you know. But um, it's a good solid knife. Like you say, it doesn't rust. You can put it down on the ground in the mud, pick it up again, give it a wipe off. It's clean. Sharpen. What I was, what I was really made, amazed about was uh, the steel, how it, how well it sharpens up. Um, yeah, just a good old all-round sturdy knife. Like it a lot. It kind of really surprised me as well. I mean, we both used Mora's for a long time. We had the companions and the clippers and yeah, that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they're great and all. They're, they're really good starter knives. But um, yeah, Mora have kind of really outdone themselves with these. And after. A year's use, we've been running courses with these, um, you know, doing all sorts of things, batoning, creating craft sets, uh, making bows, um, you've used lots, lots of cooking as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's a great all-rounder, you know, uh, cutting up your veg, cutting up your, your meat, and uh, yeah, it's just a good all-round knife, yeah. you know, can't fault it. Highly recommend them to anyone who's looking to get something that's just solid and you know you could go down the route of a custom knife and why not it's nice to have something unique but if you want to just take something out and use it get one of these because they're, they're spot on so before we go 
I just wanted to also mention that the Wizards of Mora have actually managed to make a shrunken version of this. I don't know how they did it, but um, this is the little Mora Eldris, which is basically along the same lines as the Garberg. It's just a shrunken version. So this little one here, I keep that in my pocket most of the time at the moment. So yeah, it's just a smaller version, same sort of handle style. Um, again, it's got the flat Scandi grind on it. The steel on these is different. This is a slightly lower grade steel. It's a 12C27 as opposed to a 14C28. But it's still a very good steel, very easy to sharpen. The thing I find that I use this one a lot for is generally the more sort of delicate tasks, as you'd expect. A lot more carving with this. Uh, but also, when you're carving the notch out of a bow drill, for example, it's a lot easier with a 2mm thick blade than a 3.2mm thick blade. So yeah, that's just another thing that that little shrunken Eldris is a lot more handy for. And it's on me all the time, pretty much. Don't really notice it's there. Nice to have a little fixed blade that's just solid and I can rely on. So just to add, we weren't paid to do this review at all, we just had these a while and liked them and thought we'd make a little video. We don't know Mora or who he is, but um, thank you very much for making a decent knife, thoroughly enjoyed them. Thank you, yeah, quality. Cheers Mora.